Hey everybody, this is Ryan King, and in this Blender tutorial, I'm going to show you how I animated this Rubik's Cube. So in my modeling Rubik's Cube tutorial, I got a comment from somebody who was wondering how to animate it. And they showed me the issues that they were having uh, while trying to animate it. So I jumped into Blender and I tried to animate it as well and had the same issues. So I looked online, did some research, and it looks like other people have been having this issue too. I looked on the Blender Stock Exchange and found that people were having this problem. And I also looked at some other tutorials and just tried to figure out how this is being done because people are definitely doing it. But it looks like a lot of people have been having issues on how to do this. So I finally figured out how to do it. So before I figured out how to get this to work, when I just tried to go and animate it, this is the problem that I was having. So I would rotate these, and the problem was they were all kind of shrinking in and then coming back out. And of course that looks really weird and it doesn't look good. And then of course when you try to animate another side, it acts even weirder. These were the issues that I was having, and I'm sure there might be more issues that other people are having. But I figured out how to do it, so this is what I'm going to show you. So if you haven't already, you can go ahead and watch my Rubik's Cube modeling tutorial video. The link will be in the video description. And I just show you how I created this Rubik's Cube. If you've already modeled your own Rubik's Cube, that works too. Uh, I'm going to show you just how to make this work. So there's a few important things that we need to set up before animating. And this is really the problems that people were having and the problems that I was having. So the first thing you need to make sure is that all of your little cubes are separate objects. So if your cube is one object, you're going to need to separate all of those little cubes into their own object. In my tutorial video, I did show you how to do that. So I just pressed P and I separated by loose parts, and then it separated all these little cubes into their own objects. So go ahead and do that if you haven't already on your cube, or if you followed my tutorial, then it should already be like this. The other really important thing is where the object origin is, because right now I've set the object's origins to the center of its geometry. So to do that, you go object, set origin, and then uh, origin to geometry. And usually with like most Blender projects, that's really great. It works really well because then uh, this little orange dot right there is in the center. So when you like rotate it and stuff, it's going to be rotated in the center of the object. So it makes sense. But for this type of animation, this actually doesn't work. So what we need to do is we need to set one origin point to all of these. So all the origin points of all these little cubes need to be in the same space. And that space needs to be the very center of the cube. So how I'm going to do this is I'm going to click on this top uh, little cube right here. I'm going to press H to hide it. And then I'm going to click on this center cube. So this is the cube that's in the very center of our entire Rubik's cube. I'm going to press shift S and then I'm going to click on cursor to selected. So that will bring our 3d cursor, this thing right here, the 3d cursor, that's going to bring it to the center of this object. So it's going to bring it in the center of the Rubik's cube. Then I'm going to press alt H to unhide that cube that we hid right there. And then I'm going to select all the cubes. So all the cubes like that, just select the entire Rubik's cube. And with all those selected, I'm going to go object set origin, and I'm going to click on origin to 3d cursor. So what that's going to do is it's setting the origin of all those objects that we have selected to the 3d cursor and the 3d cursor uh, is in the very center of the Rubik's cube. And one really important thing that you need to do to get this to work is you're going to need to change the rotation mode. So to do that, I'm going to press N and that'll open up this panel right here. You're going to go to item, just make sure you have one of these selected. And then right here, you're going to click right here. And this is the rotation mode. You're going to need to change this to this one. I don't know how to pronounce this, but uh, it's this one right here. It starts with the Q-U-A-T. So, and it, this one is W-X-Y-Z. So you need to click on this, and this is going to allow us to actually do that um, cool twisting animation. But this rotation mode, each object has its own rotation mode. So when you click on another one, Right here, you can see it's back to the default, which is the X, Y, Z. So what we need to do is we need to make this one, this type of rotation mode on all of our objects. So I need to just click right here and go to this one and just keep on doing it. So click on the object and select this one. And I don't know any way to do this across all of them with one click. So as far as I know, you're just gonna have to click on it and change it. And then I just press H to hide it. So I'm just gonna make sure all of these uh, have this rotation mode. So I'm just going to click on this and then press H to hide it. So I'll click on this, click here, turn it to this one, and then press H to hide it. I'm just going to do that for all of them. 
and the last one. So now I'll just press Alt H and that'll unhide all of them. And now if you click on all of them, you can see it's using uh, this kind of rotation mode. So now we're ready to start animate. I'm just gonna uh, go file and save just so that if it crashes, we still don't lose anything. And now we can start animating. So what I'm going to do is just bring this up, make it a little bit higher. And you can animate this however you want, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make uh, it move for 20 frames and then I'll have 10 frames where it doesn't move and then I'll move it another 20 frames. So I'll start at frame one and I'm just gonna select uh, this side because this is what I'm gonna start with. And then I'm also gonna turn on this auto key. So that means when we move, rotate or scale something, it'll automatically add a keyframe. So once I have this side selected, I'm gonna press R, I'm gonna not move my mouse, I'm just gonna click. And that's just gonna set a keyframe. Right here you can see it's added a keyframe right there. Another way to do this is by pressing I, and I will bring up the inserting keyframe menu, menu and you can just hit rotation. So if you wanna do that, you can just hit I rotation. Now I'm gonna go 20 frames over, and I'm gonna press R to rotate it, and then I'll press X. So you just need to figure out which which uh, one is going to be the right one. So it might be Z or Y, but for me it's X. And then I want to just rotate it by 90 degrees. So I'll type in 90 and then I'll press enter. So now if I move it back, you can see there we go. Now we don't have these issues. And so now I'm going to jump ahead to frame 30. You can animate it however you like, but I'm just going to jump ahead to frame 30. I'm going to deselect everything. Just go into wireframe and just select this side and then I'll go back into the uh, material preview and I will just press I and you can just insert rotation or just press R and click and then I'll move to frame 50 so that's 20 frames over and then I'll press R and Y and just uh, type in 90 and enter and now you can see it's working really great. So now I'm just going to keep on animating so I'm going to go to frame 60 and then I'm going to actually select like the two bottom ones and deselect this and I'm going to uh, press I, just add rotation, go to frame 80, and then rotate. Uh, I'm gonna rotate by 180 degrees, so that's like uh, half of the way around. And then I'll just press I, rotation. And now you can see, whoop, there we go. So you can just continue to animate this however you want. And you can see that the cube's actually unsolving itself. It's not solving itself. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna render this animation out to images, and then I'm gonna put them in the Blender video editor, and I'm gonna flip the animation so it's playing backwards. And then that way it's gonna solve itself. So just animate this however you like, and then uh, once you're done, we can do the render settings. So I just need to add a camera real quick. So I'll just press Shift A and I'll add a camera. I'll just press uh, control zero with my uh, view how I want, and that'll just jump the camera to where I am. And then I'll just press G with the camera selected and just move it around. And I can press G and double tap Z to bring it out and basically just place the camera wherever you want. And uh, you can see right here, we still had auto keying on. We forgot to turn that off. And so it actually added a keyframe on our camera. But to fix that, we can just uh, click on this and that'll turn off the auto keying. And then with the camera selected, we can just press X in the timeline and click on delete keyframes. So now we don't have any of those keyframes. I'm gonna turn my resolution to 1080 by 1080. So if I just press con control C with my mouse over there and then move my mouse up to the X one and press control V, now we have a square camera. And I've already added in HDRI to get some realistic lighting. And uh, I've already set up some other render settings, but let me just show you really quick what I'm gonna do. So on the light paths, I'm just gonna turn these down so that it'll render quicker. So I'm just gonna turn like total to two, diffuse and glossy to two, and then everything else I'll just turn down to zero. The sampling, I'm just gonna turn to maybe like 50, and then um, I'm gonna be rendering on my GPU. And something else that I wanna do real quick is I wanna turn on motion blur because then when the cube is rotating, it'll have a little bit of blur and it'll just make it more realistic. I just think it looks really cool. So that's what I'm gonna be doing. And something else I'm gonna do is on the film right here, I'm just gonna turn this transparent on and that's gonna make the background transparent. So now I'll just go file and save just to save that again. And then I'll press F12 to render out an image. And once the image is rendered out, I'm just gonna go over to the compositing tab I'm gonna hit use nodes and I'm just gonna pull these out and then I'll press shift A and I'm gonna add an alpha over node. So I'll just drop the alpha over right in there and then I'm gonna bring this to the bottom image and the top image, I'm just gonna make kind of like a blue color. You can do whatever you want. 
uh, just like that. That's basically going to be the background of it. And then I'm going to press shift a click on search and start typing in viewer, just grab a viewer node and just drop it in like that. And then you can see behind here, here it is. Now you can see it's a bit grainy. And so I'm just going to press shift a start typing in D noise and just drop the D noise node right in there. And that'll just clean up the scene and make it look a bit nicer. So that's basically all I want to do. Uh, you can add, you know, like camera movement, you can add like a depth of field, or maybe have it like sitting on a table, do whatever you want. But just for for this, I'm just gonna uh, do that. So I'm going to go back into layout. And uh, I'll just click F12 again, just to render it out and see how long it's going to take to render. And for me, this image rendered out in 12 seconds. So that's pretty quick. And that's pretty good for an animation. And I only have like, 120 frames or something. So uh, that's going to be how long each frame is going to take. So it won't take too long. So I'm just going to skate back out of this and I'll just see where the animation ends. And then I'm just going to set the end frame to 120 just because that's how uh, my animation is. Then I'm just going to set an output for these images. So I'm going to go down here, go to output, and I'm just going to make a folder on my desktop. So I just made a folder on my desktop and I'm just going to put these images in here. So I'll click accept and then I'm going to render them out to PNGs. You could render them out to JPEGs or something, but I would definitely suggest rendering them out to photos as that just works a lot better. Um, like if your blender file crashes while you're rendering, you're going to have to re-render it. And I found that there are sometimes glitches when you're rendering it directly out to a video file. So I just use pictures and then using blenders video editor, we can just add that together and make a final animation. So uh, now I'm just going to, hit control F12 and that'll start rendering the animation. All right. And the animation is done rendering now. So I'm just going to go file and save, and I'm just going to open up a new blender file. So we'll just go file and new. And over here, I'm going to go over to video editing, but if you don't see this, you can go to the splash screen and you can just click on uh, video editing. So there's a few things that I've set up. Um, I've closed this cause I don't really want it. And I also turn on uh, AV sync right up here. And then I also turn on uh, audio scrubbing. Um, and so let's go add in our footage now. So I'll press shift a, and I'm going to add an image sequence and here are all the images that I've animated. So I'm just going to uh, press a to select all of them and click add image strip. And you can see it's all squished. So what I need to do is go to strip and then go set render size. And now you can see it's 1080 by 1080 and that's how much I rendered it. So now if I just click play or I have the space bar set up so I can click play with the space bar, you can see here is the animation. And if you want to make the cube solving itself, we're going to need to flip the animation so that it starts out unsolved and it solved itself. So to do that, I'm going to go over to this panel. And if it's not here, you can press N to open up that panel. And uh, right down here, I'm going to go to video and then I'm going to click reverse frames. So now the, uh, it's not solved and then it solves itself. And so there we go. And then if you want this to just um, be a little bit longer, you can just drag this out and then that'll just stay there as a picture. And then you can just set the end frame. Uh, I'm just going to set the end frame to about uh, 165. So I'm going to go down here into these render settings, the output, I'm going to click on this. And I'm just going to render this uh, video out onto my desktop in a folder. So you can just render it out wherever you want. And then I'll press accept right here where my face is in the way, but right there, just press accept like that. And there we go. And then as the file format, it's not going to be PNG. It's going to be FFmpeg video. And then uh, again, you can do whatever settings you like, but I'm just going to show you the settings I use. So on the encoding, I have this set up as MPEG-4 as the container, and then the video, the video codec I have uh, set up as H.264. I leave this at medium quality and good. And then down here on the audio, if you have any audio, you can set it to something. I usually use either MP3 or ACC. Um, this video, I'm not using any audio for this, so I'm just gonna use no audio. And I'm just gonna save this real quick, so I'll go file and save. And I've just saved this video editing file on my desktop. Uh, so that if it's rendering and it crashes, we don't lose this and we won't have to do this all again. And so now I'm just going to click on render and render animation or control F12. And here it is. So uh, this is the tutorial. I hope it was helpful and I hope you're able to follow it and I hope it works. And for the person who had the tutorial request in my Rubik's Cube modeling tutorial, uh, let me know if this helps. I hope it was helpful and I hope you're able to follow along. 
And if you guys follow this tutorial and you post an animation online, uh, leave a link in the video description so that I can check it out because I like seeing what you guys create. And if you guys have any tutorial requests, you can leave them in the comments as well. Uh, I can't promise anything, but if it's something that I know how to do, hopefully I can make a tutorial on it if I get some requests for tutorials. And I wanted to share with you guys real quick that I do have a Blender Market store where I'm selling my tutorials and also selling some like 3D models and stuff. So if you guys want to help me and download the tutorial and get the final renders and the finished Blender file, uh, you can do that on my Blender Market. And I also have a Gumroad page and I'm selling on a few other sites. So the link will be in the video description to uh, my Blender Market and other sites if you want to help support me. So I hope this was helpful and I hope you enjoyed it. And I'll see you guys in a future video.